Welcome back to There Will Be Duds. This is your co-host, TJ, a.k.a. Chase Font Jack Cheese. And with me, as always. You sound like Uma Thurman saying, and Vincent Vega in uh, <laughs> fiction. Uh, hi, I'm Nick, a.k.a. Dr. Funk on Twitch. And with me, as always, I'm going to start int- I'm gonna start doing that in the intros. Mm-hmm. Uh, as always, I'm Travis, a.k.a. The Super General. And with me, as always... As always, I'm always Moose from the game, Tommy, and always is only sometimes always. I am eternal. (laughs) No, and with me as always. (laughs) Dude, what does mine say? I wasn't here last week because I was living it up at the Renaissance Festival. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, nice. Did you eat a whole turkey leg? Oh, yeah. Sorry, a dragon's leg. I did not, but I did have half a bottle of mead and the bees just followed us around the The whole time because they because they could sense the mead they were like i need this honey oh wow that's because you're so sweet (laughs) and full of mead (laughs) um where was the where was the renaissance festival i meant to ask you that because i think odd mission texas i love that name and i I knew i'd remember odd mission yeah todd mission Oh, wow. uh, um, he, he had one mission and it was to n- name a place after him. Hey, you're I successful. Wanna a, I want to have future Renaissance fairs someplace. <laughs> uh, one of my, I don't know if he did it like for like a show or something, but uh, one of my like movie friends, I saw him post like, oh, good weekend at the Renaissance Festival. And it was at Todd Mission. And I was like, I wonder. And it, it seemed like it was called like the Texas Renaissance Festival or whatever. So I was like, okay, that's probably it. Yeah. These are my Todd that's Missions. Dope. Sorry. I don't <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds more like a missions from Todd than. Yeah. <laughs> that's like a different, a, like that's a a different festival. <laughs> yeah. Like a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did anyone have any like intro? I, both of my, I had two in mind, but I'm not Um, finished with either. I can be brief, but, uh, I started watching the Sopranos. We are almost done with season one and holy shit. Is it good? It's very, very good. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to revert back to my favorite corner about hating streaming services. Cause I do not think that this show would make it at all if it aired now because the pacing in it is very it's like it's like that old school prestige tv like slow deliberate pacing like very slow character introduction because like that's Mm -hmm. a criticism i've always seen of breaking bad is that the first season so slow nothing happens the first four or five episodes of the sopranos are like some of them yeah the way that like it just introduces characters and it it, it's Mm -hmm. very 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 slow burn but uh, it's I, I'm really enjoying it. It's very good at being like hitting you very hard with with some lines of dialogue, but it doesn't seem that way until you like you think about it. Like there's a there's a, a, a famous bit of it that I've seen going around Twitter because I think when quarantine happened, everyone was in lockdown and everyone was just like, you know, we should watch the Sopranos. So for like a solid three months, everyone online was like posting Tony Soprano memes. But the one that we just watched, uh, the character Christopher, who's like Tony's nephew, who's trying to be like he's, he wants to be a made man. That's his kind of character arc. He wants to be taken seriously. And um, there's a scene where he's talking to uh, Polly, one of the goombas, I guess, with, with Tony. And he just says, he's like, you ever feel like nothing good was ever going to happen to you? And Polly says, yeah, and nothing did. So what? And it was, it's almost, it's kind of almost, it's a very quick scene and it's not done with like, you know, I feel like if it was like a a prestige TV show now, like low strings would swell up as he said that Mm -hmm. and it would like, but it's just like, they move on so fast, but it's just like one of those lines that kind of like a drive by hits you and you, you think about it and you're like, oh shit. So yeah. And then every time I watch that show. I walk around the house being like, woke up this morning and got myself a gun. Because the, the intro music is just so good. Oh, okay. 
I I haven't seen it either. It's it's one that I've. I would know, I would highly recommend. It's been it. on my list for for years and years, and I just have never gotten around to it. Italian excellence, but, and my favorite part is that they reference like Goodfellas and like Martin Scorsese, and like half of the cool. cast of The Sopranos were in those movies. Like Tony Soprano's oh, therapist, yeah. his therapist she was in goodfellas so it's just like they mm. it's it's almost like this weird universe where those movies exist but like those actors were in those movies it's it's That's it's kind of funny. funny i was a soprano yeah in high school choir right oh there it is <laughs> i mean <laughs> i'm more of a tenor myself yeah. no i'd be a bass what am i talking about yeah, my 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 voice didn't change until I was like seventeen, and so I was fucking singing like Justin Bieber all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I um, had. Uh, my yeah, I, my I, my my uh, PhD advisor is Italian, and so I wonder what his take would be on some of those. Uh, my my only. Ha- my only hesitation to it and like it's not actually going to keep like i'd still i wouldn't let this actually keep me from watching it the main reason is i just haven't gotten around to actually starting it but like i've noticed i don't know if like in general gangster movies are my thing because like i think like these movies like uh well i mean i guess i should say like i don't know there's probably some like side genre ones that i'm like not thinking of but like your Italian like mafia movies like because most of them that I've seen I just think are like all right like I would say the Godfather is the best one but I still didn't like love it um and that's like considered by a lot of people to be the best movie of all time so I guess I was like a little disappointed mm-hmm. but maybe just because it's hard to live up to being the best movie of all time but like I I like the first two Godfathers. They're pretty good. They're probably my favorite of that ilk. Um, but then, like, I just think Goodfellas is okay. I think The Irishman is okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't even think of any other ones, but I probably just know think basically okay. any Martin Scorsese but, movie. No, no. But I did. I said Italian mafia movies, Travis. <laughs> I would count that it's which one except they're irish it's it's a very no 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 uh, the departed is a very oh. different vibe from all of those <laughs> okay you know what yeah. i think it is cj well i see, think the thing think with you're the, just not hard so enough nitpicky. you're the, not, the thing with the sopranos enough and, and you can't relate <laughs> the thing with the sopranos is probably, that they yeah. they kind it's kind of meta in that way where they're like they're frustrated by the representation in in like those mm. types of movies that's like uh, uh cuz like there there's like scenes where they get mad at um former members who flipped on them and then went on to like write books and tell all movies and like oh, okay be, because cuz like the guy who wrote the godfather i don't think was connect like the mob was Mario so Puto. disorganized before the godfather came out and then i think the godfather came out and all like the mafia people were like oh like we're cool and badasses, but I think before that they were like super disorganized and like kind of just idiots. And then like these movies yeah. came out and like made everyone think that like oh they're so organized and calm yeah. and cool and collected. But uh, no, the, it, it's sort of a meta thing where they're just like yeah, everybody wants to be in the Godfather, a good fellas, and it you know it's not like that. Yeah, kind of subverts it a little bit, I guess. That's that's cool. I I I do have like higher hopes for The Sopranos, just based off of like what I've seen and heard. Despite my, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> we can cut this out. I guess I was gonna say my my racism against Italians. <laughs> <laughs> We're not live, so I can always yeah. say it. Uh, my um, favorite, my favorite little thing is when Tony. We're not Sopranos. live. I can be racist. When, when t- <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Uh, Tony gets this little smirk every once in a while, and he looks so stupid when he does it. But he's just like, it's kind of <laughs> one of those, like when he's like thinking about like when he's I don't know when he's like gonna go kill someone or whatever. He just kind of he'll be driving the car and he'll just be like, I don't know. <laughs> James, Gan- I I love. I mean, James Gandolfini is just great. I love you know. 
Yeah, I like him too in soon. what I've seen him in. Yeah. Speaking of uh, James Gandolfini, it's time for a break. Wait, what? Speaking and of shoving back. things up your ass to make you <laughs> not straight anymore. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what I should have went with. <laughs> Yeah, we re- we reference the the ad like it's like straight away is something that all of our audience has seen and recognizes yeah, right. and gets the reference. They're like, why do they keep making <laughs> weird gay shit about this ad? Do you <laughs> do you know that I like you saying that just reminded me that it's not literally straight away that is the ad. Oh, that, I, I, I like was that just idea. I just. <laughs> It's just <laughs> our ad break is just yeah. in my brain. It's always like, okay, we do the ad break and then it goes straight to TJ saying, oh man, cause he's on a swing and he's too, and he's too into girls. And it's just, it's, that's we'll just, we'll that's, just, take... just how, that's just the zone I've been in the entire time. We'll just take the, actual, we'll, we'll, the, we'll, we'll take the raw audio from straight away. And just every time they say straight away, we'll just be like anchor. Like yeah. insert it in with the new oh KY coding. Okay. You just blew my mind. It'll get that. Yeah, I was trying to think of how to work it in some of those lines. Okay. All right. Work it in because it's going up your butt. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this and we're back. Weird. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, and we're back. Um. This week's movie is this is why I felt weird coming back like in the middle of this because <laughs> it's just gonna cut to this, but oh well. Um, this week's we watched a movie titled uh, "Princess Mononoke" from 1997, directed by Hayao Miyazaki from the uh, the uh, Studio Ghibli. I was going to use an adjective there, but I couldn't think of one. Um, the, the night, the nice studio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, the, the, is it a hard G or a soft G? I say oh, we were just talking about this. It's the the way they pronounce it in their language. Although interestingly enough, Ghibli is is Italian. It's it's an Italian. Oh, well, there we they, go. Uh-oh. What it's from? Why they ended up going with the breaks? Or TJ is going to go someplace he doesn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> um uh but they pronounce it uh Ghibli. Oh. So, I guess I'm I so used say, to saying gif Ghibli. that I do the soft G for Ghibli. Oh. oh wait, yeah, I guess that is what I do. Yeah. Wait, is wait, 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 wait. We're in the weeds. A so- yeah, let's so- not we so- are talking about the movie the Prince good, on the hard- and it tells a story Prince Prince uh, uh, prince Achitaka, uh, a, a a prince of a a uh, more rural clan. It's this is set in like the like I looked. It's like the thirteen fourteen hundreds, um, is the era that it's supposed to be set in. Um, as he uh, becomes infected by this demon's curse and uh, travels uh, to faraway lands to seek the spirit of the forest to. Uh, help cure his curse and along the way he runs into both uh um forest gods and spirits and the uh town the iron town people that they are they are fighting with and kind of gets caught in the middle of this conflict between uh man and nature um and tries to do his best to uh Help everyone out. Can't we know. all just get along? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Pocahontas is it up? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 definitely another one of those that you can be like, you know, lump in with like the a little a little different, not not quite, uh, but like along the lines of those like Dances with Wolves or Avatar, or there's other examples that I'm blanking on right now, but you know, sort of like along those same lines, kind of. Um, but yeah, who, uh, I mean, I could start, or who, who does anyone want to take the, take the floor? Um, I've seen this movie a lot. I guess if no one's jumping to it. Um, yeah, go for I, it. Um, I think this is the second Ghibli movie that I saw maybe, um, after Spirited Away. 
Um, I, I, I'm, 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 uh, I've been a big fan of Ghibli since Spirited Away. I saw when I was like 12, maybe. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I, it's weird. Like, I don't like, I, I guess I, I have a lot of positive feelings about this, but I don't really know where's like a good part to start. I guess, um, dude, it's interesting to know. Sure. I guess it's interesting to note that this is, uh, I think still today, I think they're only PG 13 movie. Um, really? And it's boy, is it PG 13? <laughs> obviously because of that violence, which I love. I, I like oh, every time fuck. somebody's like arms get shot off <laughs> is so cool. Um, but yeah, for like handling a little heavier, uh, violence and action. And I, Hayao Miyazaki has like action and like, you know, combat, like this kind of action and, maybe like half of his movies, but this feels the most like brutal for sure. All the other stuff was a bit more cartoony, mm. like pig aviators flying around, uh, doing dog fights with guys in like 1920s biplanes. Um, it's a bit more silly than, than the, the stuff in this. Um, uh, but yeah, I think, I think the, the action is really good. Every fight scene is really is dynamic and interesting. And, I looked up and the reason that uh they decided to go a little darker with this, go PG thirteen, is because um it's Miyazaki's first like uh or like his his main like uh environmentalist movie. Like obviously that that's a, a major theme in this is that, you know, industrialization and all that destroying nature. And I guess he wanted like because of that, he kind of wanted to make it a little more brutal and a little more ugly to kind of show the brutalization of nature um he's he's he i i feel like him and uh more so isao takahata who's uh one of the other like founders um isao takahata that's a environmentalist stuff is like a main theme in a lot of his movies um uh but i would say that this is miyazaki's like main one and that's apparently like i said that's why that's why he decided to kind of highlight the violence and the the more severe aspects okay i've been talking for a while now, yeah so yeah because it seems like because i guess my experience with like miyazaki movies uh I, my first two could not be more different i think the mm -hmm. first one i ever saw was my neighbor totoro and then the next one that i watched was grave of the fireflies which are oh nice i was wondering if anybody had seen nice. quite different movies but i think I the, yeah those movies. uh there are yeah it's almost like there's two schools of thought with like miyazaki mm -hmm. movies where there's oh sorry you're saying ghibli Ta uh sorry grave of the fireflies is isa takahata that's a but it's a studio it's a studio ghibli movie but it's not yeah. was was miyazaki involved in that at all I mean, they're all like producers on each okay, other's okay, movies, okay. but that's a Takahata written and directed. Gotcha. Yeah, because it seems like you know there are two types of Ghibli movies where there's like very fun and whimsical and like almost meant for children, and then there's like ones that have very yeah, definitely have messages. Grave of the Fireflies is about like mm -hmm. the fire bombings in World War Two, World War Two, right? I think that's yep, yeah, yep, yep. and mm -hmm. then. There's like Howl's Moving Castle, which I don't think, which is based on a story, but mm -hmm. I, I, it didn't have, it was like a response to the Iraq war. So it's like, th this is perfectly in line with the, the Ghibli, like sending a, a message. Hey, we're sending mm -hmm. a message. Uh, you know, it's Italian. Uh, um, <laughs> I, I had seen this prior uh, they did okay. like a, a, a fathom event in movie theaters, but I think the one that nice. I saw in theaters was dubs. And the one that I watched this morning was subs. Okay. So I guess I've seen both perspectives. Uh, I, I mean, obviously I, I'm a, I'm a subs guy. I uh, much mm. prefer that. Um, but I also <laughs> really enjoyed it. I, I, I like it quite a bit. Um, definitely forgot how violent it was. Cause it's like, he gets poison in his arm at the very beginning, which like responds to affronts to nature. And it's like his arm gets pissed on his behalf. And when yeah. he gets pissed, <laughs> like he like catches arrows, puts them in his bow, and then just like Dude. shoots their heads oh. off. 
I, I wrote like, that part <laughs> down. That part is so fucking cool. It's so funny because it's like it'll be a guy riding on a horse, and like when it cuts his head off, it'll just be like boink, and it flies off. Yeah. <laughs> like it's still kind of cartoony, but it's like yeah, ultra violent as well. It, it's like yeah. that episode of Rick and Morty where like he he has like an arm that's like has it has a life of its own. Have you seen that episode? And it like just beats up a bunch of these. Like, oh, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen Idle Hands yeah. with Devin Sawa. Uh, that's kind of <laughs> the same idea. <laughs> uh, I think my only critique is that sometimes I don't think it's like too heavy handed, but I think it's very not subtle, <laughs> which uh, I don't I, know. If I've heard like, that. Yeah. yeah. We have yeah. to go to the West where <laughs> all of Oh, the... I didn't even like. I didn't think of that. I think yeah. most mostly you're correct that I think it is very heavy handed. I I think I'm I'm like I give I I uh um that doesn't bother me quite as much because these are kids movies essentially even with these heavy themes like Studio Ghibli is, you know, essentially like what everybody knows it's like it's the Japanese Disney right mm -hmm. it's just they're not afraid to tackle heavier themes in yeah. their kids movies like jesus christ grave of the fireflies uh -huh. fucking brutal amazing movie but yeah Absolutely brutal. brutal um uh so yeah in that regards i'm like i'm a little okay even though yeah it is very like you know this iron ball yeah affected this god and turned uh -huh. him evil what is that yeah mean? yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and like Ashitaka is, he kind of I don't know my I, I have a couple notes where I was just like why are you such a little centrist shithead about this like can't we like can't we live in peace with both like he kind of plays with all of the fact like obviously like his whole character arc is like to be good and to save people mm -hmm. like no matter what which is yeah valiant sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess in terms of like environmental, I don't, I don't want to be like, I'm an eco terrorist, but it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we don't are the timetable well, for uh, environmental issues. Uh, it's getting this is like 97. And yeah. it's like <laughs> the timetable is kind of shrinking. That's very interesting. It's a very interesting take, Nick, because in, in, I I thought it was an, an interesting um, and fresh idea to like have the humans not be the bad guys period you know well sort of like no they weren't they weren't the bad guys period in this movie the um, okay i guess the, i think i the, i think i go you know what i mean like humans in general there were a few there were a few shitty humans that made some bad decisions but mm -hmm. even lady what's her face Eboshi. at the end had this had their redemption moment where she's like you know what Maybe I should respect the forest. Or After whatever. she gets her arm and... bit off. <laughs> yeah, which yeah, is also right? great. And... She, she just like foreshadows it with the, uh, what, you cut a wolf's head off and it can still bite mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And and I think it's it, it was really interesting that in the end you sort of got this like um, delicate balance back where it's like there's, there's still – a conflict between humans and nature like like um uh mononoke straight up says like at the end i can never forgive the humans for what they did mm -hmm. and then and then prince ashitako is like hey like i get you peace but i gotta go help him out you know how it is <laughs> and she's like yeah <laughs> i get you and then uh oh, but we'll visit sometimes maybe fuck i don't know how they do how they, how they do it <laughs> And is that considered bestiality? <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> to, to, to have sex with a human who was raised by wolves? She says, "I'm a wolf." <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, they keep talking about how she. Yeah, she's. Uh, uh, I mean, well, if, there are if there furry are, sex is are, not bestiality, then this is there are this is covered who, under that. Who <laughs> okay. Identify as as like animals. Like they saw a documentary about. It. They call themselves like therians or something. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Let's or not like... let's not loop that in with this though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tumblr yeah, flashbacks. Exactly. What I'm saying is they 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 bone and it's not bestiality. It's <laughs> okay. Kind of yeah, I, that's canon. I, but, but yeah, so um, but yeah, so 
so there's still this conflict between na- nature and humans but like at the end i th- the humans like that survive i guess kind of have a better understanding of of nature and and like have some remorse for what they've done but they still but they but they still like have a right to like exist and have their little civilization or whatever just maybe not go all saruman and burn down all the trees to make yeah them, it's uh, it's a very things. optimistic view of how humans would react when being bought brought to yeah. the brink it is yeah it, is. it well the way that uh um because I I don't know I after reading after read after watching the movie I, I like went through the the Wikipedia article and like how how Miyazaki sort of encapsulates the whole environmentalist like people versus nature is that like he and and it's why I think um uh it it still has that slant towards nature towards environmentalism but it's uh it's more balanced because he like writes it as like with an understanding of like humankind's need for growth and expansion and mm-hmm. as well as nature's need for preservation and kind of how these things are like out of balance and how like you think that they you could work together so that's kind of why he like he gives lady aboshi like she starts out and she's like oh this seems like just an an outright villain but then like when Ashitaka meets her, you realize that she's actually like she cares about people, right? She she yeah. she mm-hmm. seems like a really good person, like two people, right? She she brought in all these like the brothel workers and the lepers and gave them homes and gave them jobs. Um so she is like really good to them. But then also there's the part where she's I think it's it's a little conflicting because like and and maybe she's just being pragmatic because that's who she is but in the the first scene you see her in where they get attacked like on the mountainside and like the dudes fall off the cliff and then those are the ones that ashitaka like rescues later um she's just they're like oh should we go try to get them and she's like they're dead let's just go home Mm -hmm. but then they're not all dead ashitaka saves a couple and it's like oh maybe maybe they could have saved more but she's just a bit uh cold and just but again maybe that's just her being like we need to get home because otherwise we're gonna you know we could lose more of us or or whatever sure yeah, yeah I, I guess it's I'll... hard My... go ahead sorry it's it's hard to, to say like she does seem to be kind to those people but they're also like you know not undesirables i guess uh so maybe she's just like the ultimate capitalist and she just like takes lepers and she doesn't she pays them in rice like you don't know but like that's, she does no, that's definitely what i think it's like four day long shifts yeah at the bellows Excuse it does me. seem like she treats them with respect yeah. and kindness because like when she comes in to see the lepers the first time they're like they are excited but maybe it's yeah. just because before yeah. they were homeless and now they get to live indoors i guess Make yeah that's war <laughs> That's true. I don't know. I like I can definitely see that. I just knowing with how they were with like all the characters making them kind of uh like, you know, pros and cons to everybody, even yeah. Mononoke. Yeah. Uh, even like smaller characters like Jigo has like layers to him. I I, I think don't you're know. supposed I, to be conflicted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and I don't I don't know if they would like then again hide under the they'd be like oh lady bo she's bad and then actually she's not all that bad and then mm. secretly actually she bad um <laughs> but yeah I can, his, I his irl it's not like that you know like like people aren't all bad even the even the all even the bad people that we shit on for being bad aren't all that bad you know I think, like yeah i think that's you know, the point like, I'd say yeah, the certain people in charge now are a little bit uh, less <laughs> forgivable than okay. somebody like Lady Eboshi. I'm, 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 I'm picturing like your typical uh, capitalist. <laughs> your typical capitalist, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like like um, your typical business owner that mm-hmm. has a that really has a hard time uh, choosing who to vote for for president. You know. Like right there in the middle, these fucking centrists with their with 
pay, paying the minimum wage to their, you know, employees and thinking they're doing a good job. Like, like, li- lady, what's her, what's her name? I keep forgetting Eboshi. her name. Eboshi. Eboshi. Yeah, Lady Eboshi. It, it's almost like in this, uh, like, the way that humans have been living, like, she's been socialized to think that, like, nature is a resource in the same way that the lepers and the um, uh, brothel workers or, are yeah. are like resources that she can use, but she also but there but she also relates to them on a human level because she's a human, you know, mm-hmm. like like um, my uh, my my dad is a conservative, but he's really nice to people because that's how he is and that's how he was raised but also he thinks that the idea of universal health care is is bullshit because you should have to pay for that sort of thing and it's like and it's just like th- these 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 um i think this movie kind of and like the portrayal of lady aboshi aboshi um she's just that forgettable um kind of highlights the cognitive dissonance that that goes into that you know well, i think because... she's the product of a system larger than herself she's sort of like a cog exactly. in the machine exactly yeah exactly and she's especially like during yeah. for so long and and you um and she's she's doing a bunch of shitty stuff but she's also deep down do the ends justify a, the means a normal essentially person, a good person yeah, yeah kind of yeah well no i think i think i think she doesn't i think she didn't see a problem with fucking up nature until the very end of the movie like not even like like well right. it's not great but we need it for our oh audience. yeah no she was like straight right. up like only no, until they were brought to the brink of like yeah. being sucked up by headless mega deer like the absolute goo. that's what yeah. it takes yeah that's what it takes yeah. We, we should do that. We should we should summon like a, a, forest? A, a forest god and cut okay. off his head just so that it can be <laughs> metaphorically speaking, we already are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that um Lady uh Aboshi. Uh Stop. Aboshi these nuts. <laughs> okay. I knew you were doing that. Damn it. I knew it. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it just sense. it just has to sound like it. A bow, she these nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> like these nuts. Okay, I guess. Um, I, almost I sounds guess like I both. Uh, Ebo- yeah. Ebofa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> you think, lady? Yeah, I think that. Oh, she. Towards the beginning, she views the. I think she views the forest as or nature or whatever as something that needs to be dominated or defeated yeah. mm-hmm. because it's in her way for um like my dog's going crazy in the background <laughs> i don't think you can it doesn't look like you can hear it. it's fine um yeah i just i don't think that sh- she she doesn't seem value in it because she wants to she says at one point that she wants to like control the world. It's I think it's when she goes to talk to the lepers for the first time. She's she says she yeah. wants to like oh yeah take over the world, and in her version of the world, nature doesn't have a place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um yeah I I yeah. think she is supposed to just be like a shithead. No okay, what I mean with like her being layered is like I don't think that like her. Like, I think unequivocally her position on, like, nature is supposed to be viewed as bad, especially in this environmentalist right. movie. But I just mean that, like, the fact that she is doing it for her people makes it, like, yeah. morally ambiguous. Like, it's still bad what she is doing, but she has good intentions. So you're like, oh, I can save her type of thing. Like, yeah. I can fix her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because um, there's, 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 there's multiple conflicts in this, because this is also during, like, uh industrialization and there's like the samurai and there's like the old ways and that's it's sort of um you know modernity and this coming you know full steam ahead and clashing with each other Mm -hmm. so um 
it's right when guns are starting to like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. become a thing. Yeah, Last Samurai. That's yes. Throw yeah. that in the cup. I don't know which Last one. Samurai. Absolutely, throw that in the cup. <laughs> I, I was obsessed with that movie as a kid. Anyway, it's great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah that, I mean yeah. that movie has a very similar theme where he joins. He right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Kind of. Um, so, uh, kind of. Kind of. No, I was saying kind of. Also, no, I would say yeah. Uh, that's a part of a Seven Samurai too. Mm-hmm. It's just a, it's not as pronounced as in yeah these two movies. But no, remember there's oh I don't want to give it away, but there's there's rifles and uh, yeah pretty much the only thing that dude I don't want to say anything yeah but no, I mean, there's yeah, rifles and they, they have some pr- Nick hasn't I have not seen Seven uh, Samurai Nick it's not do another ha- Haunting of Hill House <laughs> <laughs> here I'll I'll take my I still, I, I still have nightmares about that um. <laughs> Yeah. Not about, anyways, not not about not about the Haunting of Hill House, but of me spoiling. <laughs> well, I'm with you. I, I forgot thought it he already. said he had already watched it, so I'm. I think it's Nick's so, fault. Yeah, blame me. <laughs> the um, uh, TJ mentioned that like everybody, so like so like was has like all these layers, like like we were talking with Lady D's nuts. And ladies nuts on your face. There you nice. go. Oh, there you go. That's where it is. It works both uh, ways. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, but one way is better. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> layers. So, layers. And I noticed that too. Every character has layers except Ashi Taco. I love how you say Ashi Taco too. That's he's, great. Yeah. He's a, That's he's very a paladin. Tex- Texicana or whatever it's called. Yeah. Day one. From from minute one, second zero, to the end of the movie, he is the same character, mm-hmm. and he's just like, "I'll do it," you know. But I and, think that's I think that's his role as the protagonist. Well, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I'm just saying like that's an that's that like that's interesting that everyone, even the fucking like gods of nature, mm-hmm. have the have these like uh, you know moral ambiguities to arcs. them Arc, yeah. Arc, yeah and then and then our, our hero just come, and it's not it's not a criticism it's just i'm just noticing that like hey look at him mm-hmm. go like i i i want to i want to be his friend because he'll never let me down <laughs> I, I think that's how i feel too every time i watch this i'm like i ashitaka is such a such a good guy he's such a bro I, I, I wonder if he's badass. if he's supposed to be like an audience surrogate almost where he doesn't he he kind of responds to stuff like as it's happening like oh i'm gonna protect you but also i don't want you to kill these guys but also i don't want you to kill these guys but Mm -hmm. he's almost like a a blank slate to like i guess project your like the audience's reaction to things on i don't know if that's anything or that's a bad read but because he doesn't really have like a huge character arc other than Mm -hmm. his his role is protect whatever i see within my immediate vicinity like no matter who what. their alliance is with yeah i could i i could definitely see myself pr- projecting onto <laughs> this blank uh, <laughs> canvas uh, um, um yeah oh, go ahead, I, I think the whole thing is about balance all of the the characters all balance each other yes. out it's all about balancing out like humans have to survive but also nature needs to survive that's the balance between like oh ladies nuts on ashi <laughs> taco uh, boshi nuts oh, uh, taco <laughs> this dick yeah taco this <laughs> dick okay <laughs> yeah ashi taco this dick <laughs> uh, <laughs> like they i mean he's probably the only one that doesn't have in like a yin and a yang but everybody else seems to have kind of a yin and a yang type uh mm-hmm. uh there are two know, wolves inside of arc. You. Yeah, even That's even the bit. shithead guy, the the b- 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 Billy Bob, Gigo. Yeah. Chigo, he's kind of like seems like nice at the beginning, and then he's just like a shithead at the yeah, end. Yeah, that's what like, I yeah. almost like flip flopped. He's yeah. almost like uh, ends up being the main villain in a way, or at yeah, least he's I the one he that is. prolongs the conflict the most. Yeah, because he well, has his own like he's like, oh no, I'm cool, I'm cool, Ashitaka. Yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just a, a another dude. What's up? Yeah, you're let's new to together. town. I'm gonna help you. These guys yeah. want to rob you, and I'll keep you safe. And then, and then he's like, and then he's like, yeah, 
Lady Eboshi. Let's work together. And then he's like, actually, I don't give a shit about Lady Eboshi. I need it for my own means. Because he was going to, like, take it to the emperor or whatever. He's, or, no, he yeah, he's, like, the true, like, capitalist. He's entirely yeah, he in really it for is. himself. Yeah. Yeah, he's the Italian gangster of this movie because he's <laughs> he like blackmails people and Jesus But he also Christ. gives up super easily. Like after they return the head, he's yeah. just like, "Well, okay. Fuck. These people yeah, are dumb. Are oh well. Like I'll just keep thing. He's like Yeah. I can't remember there, what he says. But he's like, well, oh, there's well. no he's pretty <laughs> much uh. <laughs> the egos well, luck, weren't going to come for him, so they needed some way to get off the but lava surrounding I have always thought that is very end of return of the king, like them <laughs> on the rock and the the proverbial lava like deus ex out. birds yeah deus ex I, deep man deer face guy <laughs> <laughs> i i think so ashy taco does have a little bit of co of like internal conflict with the whole demon arm thing and try and oh. like because his story is because remember his mission that. is to see with eyes unclouded by hate mm -hmm. and throughout the movie he, it, he's tempted to like build up this hatred towards the the um the <clears throat> the, the the conflict that's going on and, the and literal the like that's yeah. happening to the to the uh to the forest and he does overcome that you know mm -hmm. so he he does have his own arc and he is able to restrain himself and then in the in the right moment to use that power yeah for good and then mm -hmm. use it wisely. And I think that's very well done. It's and, so satisfying. It really was. And especially what, with like glowing and shit. It's like he went Super Saiyan basically. What moment are you talking about? Just like when, the end or uh when he's on the way to um the forest uh, here in town. Yeah, he's on the way to the at the end, he's on the way and he like runs into the samurais or something and he like and then he just when he sprints over him right there there's why definitely am, there's I a couple scenes he all, but he also kind of decapitates someone he does that a couple times at the very at the <laughs> very like at the, like at the end near, at the beginning when he doesn't know what he's doing but like at the end is when is you know what he like, like catches them, the, the arrow like, turns like, it okay, around that part okay yeah that, yes. yes oh that was oh my See, god when he caught the arrow yeah I, yeah oh my See, god for me, i shuddered the most, I think, the most satisfying sequence of that was when he stops Iboshi and Mononoke from fighting. That's awesome. And like, I love that. He like so pushes. He like he he does that thing, and I feel like it. I, I've seen it in other movies. I almost think it's like when someone like grabs the barrel of the gun and like turns it. Like, yeah. But he, he grabs oh, he yeah, grabs the a... dude's sword and like turns it on himself. Yeah. And just kind of oh, pushes everyone cool. out of the way and just is like, no, you are stopping fighting, and yeah. like. I don't know. I, I I think that scene was like probably the highlight for me, like for the movie. Just like I I love that yeah. scene when he just I like when he, they, he just kind of like hits a boshi in the stomach and knocks her out, and then like yes, the 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 when she's like you know, like the like, don't move or I'll shoot you, and he just looks at her and then just walks dude. away, and she oh, shoots was... him, and he just keeps par oh, like barreling that's, through oh, it. Oh my dude, yeah. that's why God, as hero. as like as like as much as he tries to be altruistic and like pacifistic ashitaka is one of the hardest motherfuckers <laughs> in like a movie ever like anytime somebody challenges him he's just like fucking do it i don't give a shit <laughs> and like yeah every time he faces off of people again like all the action sequences are so good like it, that that sequence that you were talking about i love that scene and like leading up to that everything with like uh uh, San like running along the rooftops mm -hmm. with her mask, like standing up there with like the embers blowing behind her, like fucking hell, the cinema, yeah, like very very cool visuals, and, like beautiful, yeah. Movie. Um, think... oh, go ahead, finish, finish up. Uh, I was it was a little bit of a tangent, but it's 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 short. Uh, her name is San. I I looked up because they only ever say Mon Princess Mononoke like once in the movie, yeah. and it's actually a it's supposed to be a nickname given by the villagers. Uh, Mononoke is a vengeful spirit, uh, that like it says it like possesses and uh causes disease, suffering, and death. So that's what that's like the idea is that 
that's a nickname that's cool. given to her by the villagers. And I never, I always meant to look it up because I'm like, do they ever even say Princess Mononoke in the movie? And it's like, it is like the one time. Um, but it's cool. It's a, it's a better movie title than San, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I got it's a cool movie. Oh, cool. I remember what I was going to say. Uh, I, I mean, the, the, Ashitako, his, um, <laughs> he's kind of like, it, it kind of reminds me of Ikiru, where, I mean, he, he's like, oh, I'm going to die. And then especially after he goes to the forest, uh, spirit and he heals mm -hmm. the bullet wound, but not the demon yeah. curse, he's just like, okay, I'm going to die. So he follows the same arc of, or similar arc of, uh, the dude from Ikiru where he's just like, you know what? I'm going to die, so I'm just going to, like, stand by my convictions and what's right and just, like, just do, like, basically sacrifice myself. Yeah. If I If I get shot in the stomach, that's fine. If I, you yeah. know, he's just trying to get his, he's got, a, like, basically a singular mission, and he's like, okay, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my time. It might take my life, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to die anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe but, that's the idea of, like, how he is so hard is because he just, he just doesn't give a shit. That's what I mean. Yeah, okay. it's, he's just like it doesn't matter. Like he he gets shot and he he just keeps walking and they're like, how does he still walk? Yeah, he, he I, doesn't I like, care. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea though. Like I never thought of that of what Moose said about like the arm being his conflict. That like it makes sense for somebody like as like um, as much as I like Ashitaka, like we were saying, just kind of like straightforward archetype hero character, right? No real like conflict morally so the way that the movie balances that is it gives him that arm and that is kind of his it, it's a more straightforward on the no, or not on the nose but like surface level conflict mm -hmm. but that gives him his his yeah. conflict like the other characters have which is kind of cool I never thought it's, about that before yeah because that's his beaten arm and he, I yeah. guess it makes it that's easy like, for so yeah he's just got <laughs> blue yeah, balls well, the whole if he tries oh, to he'll rip really his good. dick off yeah, yeah, yeah. It just <laughs> makes it easier and then for use, no, and then, no not November he's just like oh, I don't I don't gotta worry about his, that and then take his dick and his bow and just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. somebody's head off with it <laughs> yeah <laughs> man imagine if you got decapitated by a dick yeah man what a way to go right yeah I'm um, so sad Moose is missing all of this dick toss. Yeah. So, uh, Nick, when you were saying that you watched it sub and then... Oh, dub, yeah, I did want to touch back on this, or, yeah. Or flip-flop. You said you watched it. I saw it in theaters to... with the dub, I believe. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't know there was an option, um, but also with, like... I can see it with, like, you know, like Squid Game, where you would not want to watch the the dub. What? Is there a like, dub animated? Squid Game? Yeah, that's what yeah, I watched. You haven't heard about that? It was like a huge thing because I guess Netflix. Yeah, people were making with fun like, of it. Um, Netflix was a uh, auto. I guess like it, not for me when I watched it. So maybe it was like a thing they changed early on because I didn't watch it for the first like few weeks. But it was the default was the English dub. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and, which that's how I watched it, and I even after like I knew that there was a you could watch it subbed. I wouldn't pick to watch it subbed. I don't know. I just. It was fine. It, it's not perfect, but it's also like you Squid know, Game. Yeah, oh. it's it's whatever. It's not it's not that big of a deal. Um, but like with animated stuff, like I one hundred percent of the time, without like hesitation, will go will go dub. It just like I that mean, is my some, default. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's they have to like kind of uh, fudge some stuff as far as like uh, tempo of of what they say or like what. Uh -huh needs to be said to fit the animation um but i i think fuck i think billy bob thornton is fucking terrible i think it's i think his <laughs> shit is <laughs> awful it's so um, bad and i i'm gonna I like i'm gonna give him a little bit of leeway because i think that his lines i could tell some of his lines had to like he really had to like cram them into like oh, a yeah. shot so I, i'm giving him uh, some leeway for that but there's there's other times where i think that's kind of it's kind of what they were going for but his readings are just so bland like mm -hmm. and I, I think that's it's part partly supposed to be the character but i swear sometimes it, it's like they just gave him a sheet of paper and he's like 
they were like, okay, so in this scene, you're doing that. He's like, eh, I don't need it. Uh, <laughs> so then, uh, hey, Ashitaka, get, grab that sword. And like, I, that's like it. He just I've has seen no. One before. And that red elf. Oh. Yeah. Only the people of the Amishi clan ride those. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. almost like they did a hey, table man. read. And during the table read, they just, Billy Bob's like, this is all I'm, I'm married to Angelina. <laughs> this, is, this is like I'm the maximum amount Angelina of effort I'm putting point. in. Yeah. He's like, bitch, I'm Sling Blade. I don't need to yeah. take this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm not Ashitako? Okay. Oh, Fine. man. This is all you get from yeah. me. Yeah. And Nick, unless I feel like maybe you just looked up the cast list. I just did. But you did? Oh, yeah. So you know who you missed out on in, the, in the English Anderson. stuff. Yeah, you missed out on yeah. Julian Anderson yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I also don't. I, that's part of the like recording. Like they they did it intentionally, but I don't like her voice. How it? Oh, comes she, I was just I was just gonna it's say weird. that I do like. It's that. been I like a while. The, like, it's, layering. It's been like it's a year weird. since I've seen it. Uh, okay. What did they? I guess it's almost I, I like she's down a hall, a long hallway, and she did well, it from. <laughs> like no, weird. they layer it. It's like she's talking, and she kind of has like a low sort of like voice oh. like this. But then also underneath her voice, they like double it up like an octave or two lower. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a growl, right? Like well, it's supposed in the, to kind of sound like a wolf growl. Kind of worked in the in the subs. Like in the dub. Uh, Moro's. Am I the only one who watched the subs? I think so. Probably. You know, yeah, I cause, meant because to... Travis and I mooch off of TJ's HBO Max subscription. Well, you can. Watch I watched that on subs. HBO, and there were subs. Yeah, yeah you I couldn't can. figure oh. it out. I couldn't oh. figure it out. Yeah, no. it said English original, and I'm like, bullshit. Really awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm on Apple TV, so maybe the app is like a little bit different well, for you is. guys. But I, you know, it was. I just had to switch a thing from English to Japanese, and it worked. Um. I was outside I was of the movie. It. It's not like Netflix or something where you can do it in yeah, the movie. That might be you have to yeah. like go out to like the settings. It's weird. It's uh, that's bullshit. But yeah, I mean, in the subs, the voice of Moro is very, very deep. So I think that's probably why they did that to her voice to make it sort of match like what the original was. That's my best it, guess. Is it just one? They don't do any like layering There's or no, something. It's yeah, just, no. Uh, Oh, no, okay. it's just it, I. I mean, it's probably a man's voice that they just, yeah. Okay. But man, this English voice that voice cast is stacked. It really is. Keith David as Okato is like, he's perfect. really good. He's I like love the Keith only David. one in the movie that I'm like, okay, he does a really oh, good job. That's one of my notes, and I guess it's good that one of us did watch it subbed. I was gonna ask, and I don't, I don't think so. Is there like it's in the opening shot? It's just you see like trees or whatever. Uh -huh. Is there like a voiceover that opens the movie? Oh, I think so. You think I so? Think okay. So. I, I watched it two hours was, ago, but I <laughs> I don't remember. I was I was curious because I that seemed like it could have been a an English edition, just kind of like yeah, adding narration like or whatever. And also, I saw that I guess they like they did add some dialogue to give context to like. Japanese cult, like culture of that time that like maybe Western yeah. audiences wouldn't understand. So there's mm -hmm. a little bit more like uh, context to certain things, and I thought maybe the opening bit was that, but that's a uh, Keith David too who does the the narration. Oh uh, yeah, there there might have been. Uh, I honestly don't remember. Okay, I'm just curious. Um, have we talked about how it looks yet? I mean, kind of. We kind of, I, I mentioned like a couple shots, but uh, Ghibli is always fucking gorgeous. I think. I took a I note think, that yeah. said like every time I see water in one of these movies, I get so thirsty. <laughs> or like food. Water. The way that they do food yeah. in like other Ghibli movies was, is like they'll 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 show like, like bacon and eggs cooking on like a skillet, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's God, a famous damn, that one from so Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like the anime animation equivalent to Quentin Tarantino, because whenever and, Quentin Tarantino shoots food, it looks so good. You There's know, just and, some people they, know how to shoot food. They're really, I can tell that they're really proud of their landscapes, because mm -hmm. those panoramic shots last a little too long every single time. You're mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, cool panoramic shot, and then you're like, okay, surely they'd have like turned all the way around by now. Because it's just the fucking all the way. 
there's just so much but i'm like but i love it because it's so beautiful and yeah i mean i never felt the length on at those. all i i like i so noticed I, I how like long it was ghibli movies I because i like sitting with those quiet moments in these mm-hmm. movies just because i think they're so pretty and fucking the score mm-hmm. i think like this is probably my number for ghibli it's like my number four or five i think five it's my fifth favorite of theirs but it might be my favorite score it's either this or spirited away as my favorite score out of any of theirs and all uh all of miyazaki's not all of ghibli's but all of miyazaki's are scored by joe hisaishi dude's great i mean like he he's he's like uh, pretty much every one of his scores is great but i he knows how to write a good theme and then implement that theme in like it's called leet motif, but like oh. I- implementing like various themes throughout and then doing them in like different ways. So it's like you recognize it, but it's, it's, it's different, you know? Mm-hmm. I like something I like about the animation or that I appreciate. Cause I, I mean, I like how it looks. I don't love how it's not like, I mean, it's good. That's, that's mm-hmm. what I can say about like it the actual design. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, but I do, sure. I do, <laughs> I do appreciate the attention to detail. Um, where, like, there's the part where he gets, I think it's by uh, San, where he gets cut right here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah. And like most, I think most an- animated things would just, oh, he's got a cut on his his cheek, but he actually oh, has wow. a little cut in his little hood too. Like it oh, actually wow. caught that too. Like there's just like little things like that. that Attention I to think... detail where. Right. Yeah. Right. Another one is uh, how, how careful he is with his bow. Cause he, he like restrings it a couple times throughout the mm-hmm. movie. And like he pauses uh, yep. to do that. And I, there's another point when he's dragging someone's body and he, and he, he takes his bow and he pulls it around mm-hmm. his neck so uh-huh. that he can hold it while he's pulling the guys out of the river. And it was it's he's just always very deliberate yeah. with his weapon. Dude. And yeah, you don't see that. That that's kind of what I mean, because it's not just like if you look at the people, it's like it's like not the most beautiful look, right? But you like no. the look. It's the Ghibli look. It's more like the landscape like the painted landscapes and just the overall like composition of the shots. Yeah. But yeah, it's the way that they animate people. Like to reference Grave of the Fireflies before. When I watched it the mo- the last time I watched it, because me and Kalia are we- we've been going through like all of the Ghibli movies, and we stopped right before Princess Mononoke, and that's actually why I added it to the cup. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, uh, Grave of the Fireflies. I don't think I've ever seen a more accurate portrayal of like how children act in in like an animated movie obviously not with like actual kids in live action movies but like there's the ghibli the animators there are so good at those little those little things that people do that make them seem like real people and that's why the characters in their movies just feel so real and fleshed out aside from like you know the script but animation wise it's like it's 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 brilliant i think the design of the like how they look is and maybe this is uh like uh one of those like retroactively i don't like looking at it in retrospect it changes it but like like they the characters themselves look like something you would see in like how to draw manga type books like it's it's a very right. like yeah basic it's, it's normal design. yeah the facially like, and stuff yeah i i mean i don't you know maybe they the way they drawn book stole it from this maybe art style. i don't yeah, i, I mean, don't know it's... Which came Chicken first. or the egg? Which yeah, one came yeah. first? It's yeah. a very influential. I mean, he took it, Miyazaki's first movie was Lupin the Third, which was like based off an existing art style, right? Lupin had been from right. around since like the '60s, and Ghibli kind of just molded their style from that. So who know? I mean, Lupin is one of the like originators of animator of anim, an, anime anime, um, and. Ghibli is like a direct like descendant of that. So yeah, maybe that is why it looks like what you'd see in a how to draw manga because it kind of stems from anime yeah. origins. And yeah. it, it, you know, aside from like super fantastical elements, I always feel like 
Ghibli movies are more like grounded in reality. And maybe that's why yes. the people look closer to like resembling people as opposed to like, I don't know. I'm not, Dream or... I'm not, well, I'm not, I'm not current on a lot of anime. I don't watch a lot of anime, but it mm-hmm. seems like, you know, they're, they're better mm-hmm. at emoting than just like the anime. They have big eyes or like they have the big sweat yeah. bubble or they have like the huge lines across their face to represent blushing or right. embarrassment or, or to call back like six episodes ago, the nosebleed when they're horny or, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, stuff like yeah. that. Like the, the animation style is much better at getting across those emotions without being like hitting you on the head with it. And not, and not to say that like those other animes are bad for doing that, but I think that's why Ghibli movies are kind of seen as prestige animes because there's so or, much attention to detail and in the way that humans act. Or at least like universal, right? Like world, yeah. like appealing worldwide. It's cause uh-huh. they just kind of feel more, uh, more, I don't want to say generic, but you know, it just kind of works for, for everybody because it's not leaning towards a particular style. It's just mm-hmm. its own thing. And so I like it's kind of like a, I would say like Cowboy Bebop has like a similar kind of animation style, and I yeah. I really dig how Cowboy Bebop looks too. I like how how Ghibli does their like creatures and their spirits. Right, they always mm-hmm. are so yeah. unique and cool I was looking. Just thinking about that, like the forest spirit, the Kodamas. Was, like, yeah, He's Kodamas cute. are neat. They yeah. all had fucking I cake. Was I yeah. was that's one of my notes. I was like little caked <laughs> yeah. up Kodama. There's that one that was leading them that just had yeah. cake for days. Just little yeah. booties. Yeah. I love oh, how the wolves so look caked up on a Thursday afternoon. <laughs> I love how the wolves look like when there's that side shot of Moro as she laughs and her her lips yeah, like go all dude. the way back to her like yeah. cheeks or whatever. I was, well, I was actually gonna bring that up. I think the wolves in a lot of cases look really bad hmm. there's a, there's a spot where moro's on like the rock and she's like you need you like leave when she's and, telling and the, the, yeah, yeah leave and never come back or else i'll eat you or something bite your face off i think she looks really bad on the head-on stuff like huh. her head is like really round and then the ears come out like here right off the top i mean i know she's like kind of well, doing like a threatening like ears back type thing but it just looks really it looks, she looks like a rabbit in 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 their defense i have a floofy white dog and that <laughs> is kind of how he looks from the front so <laughs> <laughs> it's just too it's too like snowman it's like if you were to try to build a wolf out of oh, it. like yeah oh, okay. <laughs> very round like it's like a snowball with a point and then is, put two sticks in the. Top. Is that the scene well, where well, where where Moro's just like kill yourself, basically like <laughs> pretty much? Yeah, it's like, yeah. like Moro's jump, just jump like you could jump if you want, you know. <laughs> yeah, like see if I give a shit. Um, yeah, so I guess one last thing before we wrap up, since we're talking yeah. about the animals anyway, the fucking like forest spirit and the and the night walker. The night walker looked so badass, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like yeah. the spirit. Well, the, the spirit like is like the creepy. Yeah, but cool. Yeah. The deer, yeah, the, the, the deer spirit. god had the it's had that Tony Soprano smirk. The <laughs> <laughs> yep. nice. Bring it back. I had it was so off putting to be a like a moose creature with antlers that didn't have the fucking snout. Right. You know. Yeah. Just having a normal human face. And then, especially from the profile, it's Uncanny like it's headless Valley. almost. Yeah, it's yeah. very weird. I mean, I yeah, mean... to be fair, I would shoot the fucking thing, too, if I saw it. <laughs> if yeah. that thing came walking up to me, fuck yeah, I'm shooting that shit. <laughs> uh, it's on sight, dear God. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want this smoke. I need to change smoke. all of my, all, like, like my, my, like my Discord profile pic to, to the to, best God. To... With the antlers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, that's not bad. The moose okay. of, of moose. I, 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 I don't want to, I know we're like trying to wrap up. I don't want this to like stem into a thing. I just, if anybody has any quick answers for this. um, One of the things that I, I to know about the, the, the beard of the forest or whatever, is that like he steps and then like the, like life springs up, which I think is a really cool touch. But then as soon as he leaves, it dies. Mm-hmm. Why? Sometimes. Like I it mean, was fine. God of life and death. It's the it's cycle. Balance. Yeah, okay. it's a balance. Yeah. I always thought like the Nightwalker was the death. This when he's in the deer form, he's life. So, oh, but, but maybe it, it, yeah, 
I, it well, there's the does, scene. There's the scene where he's the like, little sapling thing when he's bringing yeah. back Ashitaka. That's but yep. but that's to but that's like on purpose to right like bring but him it back. is like he's killing like something to kill him. The circle okay. of life. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Did anyone else um, feel super yeah. bad when San like cut that little twig? And like to take it to him in the oh, river, yeah, the and the little, the little Kodamas were just like, oh, like, yeah, <laughs> look, just notice that. Oh, I looked yeah. at it like they were eyeing it up, like, damn, I could sit on that with my juicy butt. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we we like who's to not sexualize the Kodamas here. <laughs> who's, who's getting the first ride? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Triestiality. Uh, Triestiality. There we go. Segue into yeah. scores. Who wants to start I'll, us off? I'll go first. I, I, right. I never go first. So, um, from the very beginning, at just just from the start, that first shot, that first sequence with uh, Ashitako and his village, and how badass it I was, how organized. Love and the opening the scene. Fucking like 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 watchtower structure that was like like. Like a like a pyramid on top of an inverted pyramid, and it was like it was so fucking cool. And the way he climbed it, and how awesome everyone was, <laughs> and the fight, and the and the the wise woman, and all that shit. The like Oracle. okay, from the very beginning of this movie, I knew it was gonna be a ten. Tight. I could just tell. Tight. And the 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 rest of the way just confirmed it. It's like this is a fucking awesome movie. It I'm I'm. It's going way up there in my favorites list, and I'm going to see it again and again and again. I had such a blast watching it. Awesome. I, I forgot. Did you say you had seen this before, or had you seen any Ghibli movies before? I've seen Spirited Away. Okay. Nice. That's 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 my favorite. Watch it that's, with subs. That's... Watch it with subs and see. It was so weird. with the, the pacing was so weird with the doves. They had to get all the dialogue out really fast mm-hmm. <laughs> while the I, person's I, mouth was moving. Just... That shit doesn't bug me. Awesome. I think, I think I especially, I think especially with the Ghibli movies, they they always get really nice casts, and I think they do right. a really good job with the dubs. I'm I generally lean dubs, but I can if I'm if I start an anime, and I'm like this is bad. I'll switch to subs. But mm-hmm. my default is that I really wanted to for this. I wanted to watch both subs and dubs, um, because with my favorites, I've watched like both. I've done that with Spirited Away. I have seen the subs of this before. I've done that with a Bebop, Akira, but I just didn't have time. I didn't even get around to watching this until like nine last night because just because of everything going on this week was yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. But yeah, I, I I'm gonna go to my wrap up now. <laughs> uh. Well, Travis has to go I, in like five minutes. So. Oh sure. Yeah. I guess let's let's do him and then and then you can. Sure. Yeah, might as well. You go, you go next, and then you you can do your little. I I've been your character. You, you and then we'll just insert it later. I guess I don't know. Or I not. mean, I can I can do it. You can we, do your I sign off. We'll have time. Time. Yeah. Go for um. It. See, okay, here's the thing with these movies. I've always wanted to love these movies because I do like kind of like the aesthetic of them. Um, and there's some that I do really like, but it's. I don't know. Sometimes it seems like almost like they get people are like kind of boosted. They're kind of boosted just because they're Studio Ghibli. Like it's I don't know. I I think it's fine. I don't it's not it doesn't really like speak to me. I kind of like the uh the uh moral like the message of it, I guess. I like I just I just it just doesn't connect with me on a like a emotional level as far as like i don't mm-hmm. i don't know uh but yeah i i've always wanted to like this movie i just i don't know i i will give it like a six okay so maybe 6.5 it's it's like a 6.25 it's like it's okay. like oh like it feels kind of dirty to say six because it is it's better than that but like it's def- uh, it's definitely not a seven for me. It's just like it's like yeah. it's a little better than Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't was get... a five. No, I know. Did I give it a five point five? Yeah, you did. Okay, or like or Matrix Revolution. This... Me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I that a six. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why the ratings shit's kind of weird because like 
I would watch yeah. Matrix Reloaded over this. I think like six or seven hey, times out of ten. No, I, I, yeah, I don't think my scores necessarily line up with like the preference of. That's why I don't always go off of like what would I watch. That's not that doesn't typically factor into. Yeah. Into my score personally, for me, it's yeah. not whether I would watch it again. You know, next month or in ten years or whatever. Yeah, like I gave you to in the ten, and I haven't seen it again yet. I, you know, right, right, yeah, it's yeah. Such I an just emotional experience. I need to charge up for it. But for this one, I plan to see it again, fucking like later today, probably. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think that I th like this kind of goes against what TJ was saying earlier, but like I think this movie would work a lot better if it was like an hour and a half. Like I don't, I don't like. Mm. It, it's a little drawn out for me. That's a, it's a little bit like, man, this is an animated movie that's over two hours, like. It is like one. I think most of theirs are like closer they to they are an hour and a half. Hour yeah, 40. like Rin, Wind Rises, which is my favorite, uh -huh. is, is like it's definitely over two hours. Is it okay? Yeah. Um, dang. Uh, yeah. I can go next. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Um, go ahead. So yeah, this is my second time seeing the movie. This time with subs, which. I guess it's it, it hasn't been recent enough with the dubs where I can really say like which one I like more. I think overall I prefer subs because I guess some of those people were like in my brain it feels like the authentic or real version of the movie, like how the artist intended it. Mm -hmm. I sound like an anime snob even though I don't watch anime. <laughs> um, um, I'm there with you if it's <laughs> if it's live action especially. I just don't think. Oh, okay, yeah, well, I'll, I, get, I, I'll get to that. If you were a Later, true but... anime snob, you would spend the next three years like learning Japanese, so you wouldn't even have to have subs. <laughs> have to have subs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but I, I, I think, yeah, I kind of see what Travis is saying with the length. I don't think there's too much fat to trim, but there's probably some fat to trim, maybe a little bit. Maybe. Right. But that's, maybe. that's yeah. I guess, insignificant to, like, I guess, my enjoyment of it. You know, I guess rewatchability. I'll, you know, I'll watch it again at some point probably i you know if there's like a maybe a fathom event and they show it in theaters because i like watching these in theaters uh i'm i'm sitting i'm sitting at uh at a <laughs> shit i'm gonna go with an eight i i always do eights <laughs> i i i think uh it, it's it a number it's i know i know number. i know it felt right to me because yeah. <laughs> we, we only we we tend to only put good movies in the cup it's true it's true um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it it handles, I think it handles the material really well of like this sort of environmentalism, but like humans have to survive too. How do we find the balance in that? I don't think it necessarily like answers the question, you know, and, and maybe that's part of it. It wants you to think about like, you yeah. know, how, how, how do we combat this? How do we deal with this issue? Although I guess maybe it, it is kind of more explicit in like, hey, industrialization is kind of a problem like maybe don't do that anymore but uh I, I i yeah like you were talking about like this ambiguous characters and you know their motivations and like you can you can agree with their motivations and not agree with their actions kind of thing i think it presents an interesting um case for all sides i guess yeah um so yeah i'm i'm, I'm sitting at a <laughs> did it feel gross having the words all sides come out of your mouth. <laughs> I, I I think I think <laughs> debate and nuance is good and not in the Ben Shapiro way. And that's my <laughs> and that's my stance. Um yeah. Eight. Cool. Um yeah, I as I said, I've 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 been a Ghibli fan since since I was a, a wee lad. Um I uh, I I love the message, especially considering it's like for for kids like thinking about that i i love that that he was able to like put something like this into a kids movie with some some heavier themes but again uh ghibli isn't afraid to to do that and that's one of the things i think that makes them so great i think they they are like disney at it at their best firing at all like on all cylinders i think when because when disney has like a movie that's like written as well as this and like has like good heavy thematic elements like this i think disney God, i still don't know if like there's any disney movie that i would put as high as something like princess one and okay just on like the merit like technical merit and all that i just gotta i think the ghibli movies are so pretty 
Um, and just, I just, I think they're better at balancing these different elements and just still be like good, good movies, good stories. I think Ashitaka is like one of my favorite movie protagonists ever. Um, I completely forgot to mention Yakul, who is one of the best sidekicks ever. Yeah. Fucking love Yakul so much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's up there. Um, it's, this is a tough one. I'm between a nine and a 10. Yeah, um, which is a great, I think I do want to go with a 9.5 actually. I'm sorry, <laughs> Moose, but I just, uh, it evens out math wise that way. It, it doesn't, it just, it feels like not a 10 to me, but it's very good. I love, I love these movies. I love Miyazaki. Um, and still, this is my, what, this is my fourth favorite of his. And it's still like, a arguably like a, it's close to a 10. I think he, it's pretty great. I don't, I honestly don't know if there's any other directors who have that many 10s for me. Maybe Kubrick, uh, maybe Kurosawa. Kubrick, Kurosawa, Kurosawa sure. are, are other ones probably. Yeah. The other one that I would put above this that isn't his is Grave of the Fireflies. I think that movie's fucking impeccable. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's three or four. Ponyo is the one that it's in contention with. I got to see Ponyo again. I love Ponyo. I love Ponyo. That's Ponyo, my other favorite one. I thought so. Yeah, Ponyo is so wonderful. It's, yeah. oh, it's, it's Ponyo. just it, delightful. It's delightful. so wonderful. One of my favorite scenes in any Ghibli movie is the the flood scene. Yeah, I was and they're say, driving down. The, oh my god! Nick I was like, talking about water, and there's so much water in that movie. My when I first saw that, because I didn't see that movie until like a couple years ago, I was like, I, I, I felt like a kid again watching that scene. I couldn't believe it. I was just so happy. I felt like going like, ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like that Ponyo, she's on the water. <laughs> oh God, it's so wonderful. Oh, your arm and your cast is it, it makes your clapping even more kid like. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> I have only seen the heavy, dark thematic Ghibli movies. Apparently, Plus, I guess I guess away, Totoro but... isn't like as yeah. dark and heavy, but like. I've only seen the ones that have like explicit oh. like anti-war or anti-imperialism messages, and like I haven't well, seen like I guess I Kiki, I've seen Kiki's, so that's I guess okay. Oh yeah, I, Kiki's, yeah, Kiki's light, yeah. I would say if you don't know the like underlying uh, thing about Totoro, I would say Totoro's light. You know, yeah. that's a that's a pretty just like oh. kids playing pretend and stuff. I know, but like if you know about. the fact that like. Oh, maybe they're dead, and this is like purgatory or whatever. Yeah. But if you don't know oh, that, it's, okay. it's a light movie. I feel like the direct didn't okay. d- didn't one of the directors put out a statement that they're like that's I not guess. what it's like based on a they the, no. the theory yeah 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 no it's that's more like just like a fan theory but mm-hmm. I think Miyazaki is just like no it's just it's just some kids playing yeah. that's the movie I, <laughs> I haven't seen it I forgot to mention that um I was probably like. 30 minutes into this movie and I was like Kelly wasn't watching it with me uh, she was doing some other stuff and I was like yeah I forgot because she was going to but then I was like yeah I, f- I forgot you, you're you actually going to really like this movie I think you would actually really like this movie <laughs> and she came in like maybe 10 minutes later so she caught the last half of the movie mm-hmm. and like at the end of it she was like that's probably my top 10 and I was like really? I did it. like it yeah nice I was like, yeah, you would watch the, you would, if you watch the first half of it, yeah, I think you would really, really like it. No, that's, it's like so in like line with her, like. It's, dude, it's very, every time I watch this, it's very Legend of Zelda. Like, yeah, and it's major very, Zelda like, vibes, morally, which I love. You know, like, oh, we got to get rid of hate mm-hmm. and hate is ruining it. Like, that's just like her whole, like, kind of in her whole wheelhouse, so. Mm-hmm. Which, which I again, she, I would. I thought she wouldn't have liked it because of the lack of character development for Ashi Taco. I thought that would uh, have been like a deal breaker for her. Maybe, maybe if she watched the first half, she won't because, like, oh, you know, she won't. She didn't get to see. She's like, oh, he was probably different at the beginning, so he's probably oh, changing. Yeah. Yeah. Had she not seen Point. this before, Travis? No, I don't think she's seen any oh. of them. What? So you just watched them? I guess I assumed like when you watched them, you'd watched them with her or whatever. No, so. I. Th- no, she's seen like Kiki's and like oh, okay and Totoro. She's seen Totoro too. Spirited uh, Away is for sure in my top ten, like definitely. Yeah, 
How many I would put like this in ten, TJ. Huh? How many movies are in your top ten? <laughs> like <laughs> <10. 50. No. laughs> as long as you've been doing this podcast you've mentioned a lot of top 10 because <laughs> i like talking about movies that i like <laughs> I, it's it's really like a top eight kind of that i'm like those are for sure my favorites but i just say top 10 and like the last two are kind of like rotating i guess <laughs> Yeah, it's like, like I have like a top pick. ten, okay. but depending on but, how I'm feeling during the day, it's a rotating top ten for sure. Yeah, like that, the top three like, are pretty much solidified, but everything else, that's uh, that's, that's wet spaghetti of, in the dark. Yeah, that's kind of what it is for me. It's like I would say for sure. So Spirited Away is in my top eight, right? But I think when we did Amadeus, I was like, this might be in my top ten. That's probably a rotating. That's that nine or ten slot. <laughs> that's Amadeus. Um, but this one is for sure. This one might be like num or sorry, not this one. Pr Spirited Away might be like number three or four. For I gotta go. Okay. Okay. Uh, do your thing. Do your thing. What are you? Oh, I'll what? we can. I'll tell you the movie afterwards. I guess if you gotta go. Okay. Uh, I get to go first this time. This is different. Um, yeah. I'm your Kodama considering using a broken sapling as a prostate massager travis aka the super general <laughs> the kadama sibian uh yeah uh okay. as always i am your uh no, we're not we're not all doing it because i oh. still gotta do well, we that. might as well but... we're, we could just cut it and then it i all guess so sure yeah okay uh -huh. then this will I... be fun so then good luck Good luck, Nick. <laughs> sure, let's do it. I'll just go. Yeah, okay. Go ahead, Nick. Uh, yeah. As always, I am your Uncanny Valley Tony Soprano face-making dear god, <laughs> Dr. Funk, a.k.a. Nick on Twitch. Wait. You go ahead, Moose. We're way out of order backwards. on this. Yeah, we started with Travis. Always, just, I'll just go last. I am your one million antlers on a fucking thing. <laughs> oh yeah we should have let him have that actually yeah, yeah um you you man. are the moose <laughs> yeah. um i'm since i uh yeah i think i gotta go with him i think he might be my favorite character uh i'm your bro out of 10 red elk pal uh <laughs> yeah cool yeah. um i think i think my favorite character <laughs> just overall uh <laughs> tj aka j spot jack cheese but this, uh, rewind. This has been the best outro yeah. huh? <laughs> that we've done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, We're so talented. Regarding next week, we have a guest uh, again. Um, it is uh, one of my, my movie friends from one of the movies that I did. Jake Bowen is his name. Um, he's... Uh, He's suggested uh, two movies that he, he couldn't, like, he kind of was like, you know, if we want to go this way, this movie, if we're going to go this way, this movie. I really like both of them for different reasons. So I'll just ask you guys, do you want to do, what are we feeling for next week? Are we feeling something like uh, more like silly, a little more like a light, I guess I'll say more like light conversation a little more silly in that way or do we want something a little more heady and like cerebral like so what, what are we feeling uh that's tough because i feel like this movie was pretty not not necessarily like heady and cerebral but i i think tone wise this movie was a little on the darker mm -hmm. end so i guess a contrast would be nice but also i'm i'm good with whatever i i, I like, like i said things like I said, as long as we all feel like good about it, I'd love to have him on again to do whichever yeah. one we don't do this time. Yeah, sure. Flip a coin. Do which one? <laughs> Flip a coin. <laughs> Flip a coin. Do you have one? Not really. Dude, I don't I'm have sure a there's a just pick. We we have a vote for light. What do you want? Oh, well, then I'll pick dark. Oh, okay. <sighs> well, you're the tiebreaker. <laughs> Did you just pick that just because? Just <laughs> Honestly, because? I, I am leaning dark. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I can grab a. Coin. I have a quarter. There's I, a I exactly. find a website. Do a find a website no, that will do. Quarter. Here it is. Three, two, one. Oh my god. <laughs> There's definitely like a website that you can go to that'll be like that will flip a coin for you. Unless, 
Okay. It's a right. uh, two. Uh, uh, oh yeah, for sure. It's a quarter. It's 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 George Washington, uh, Nevada. So okay. you know it's going to be a good one. <laughs> let's do okay, head, let's do tail heads for heady. Exactly, that's what I was going to oh, say. <laughs> and tails for for silly. Okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, I thought you were about to throw it at your camera. Like, <laughs> what do we got? It's tails. We're going silly. Hell yeah. Okay. All right, that's where I was leaning to. So, that oh my god, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, and he's gone. Oh, hey, well. I. You can can you hear me? I can hear. Yeah. yeah. I, can hear you. I don't know why I meant to because I did find a. Uh, did you close out OBS just, Ninja? That was just a brain fart. Yeah, I meant to close out of the coin flip tab, and, and I just, <laughs> I just clicked you out. You gotta mute yourself on the thing. Yeah. Um, oh, again. Oh shit. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Are we good again for the movie yeah. announcement? Hold on. Hold okay. On, on What's it thing. called? Do you have a? Oh, hold on. I wonder if you have a new link. Hold on. Hold oh on. shit. Good that these aren't live anymore. Dude, yeah there you go you're back you're back you're back i'm editing this okay um all right so the movie that we are doing then is from 95 i think okay directed by uh a director by the name directed of by a director no Ander way anderson one paul Straight. anderson I was hoping I'd get you with that one, Nick. It's Paul, not Paul w. Thomas Anderson. Anderson. It's Paul. Yeah. It's uh, 1995's Mortal Kombat. Oh. Fun. Is that, <laughs> is that dud territory? Uh, depends. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, probably by a lot of people uh, considered to be that jesus another you know an wow i didn't realize i looked at a who did the music and it says george clinton it's also just a name a coincidence <laughs> so, <laughs> it can be like written by aaron zorkin or something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that's like oh. uh that's like a union thing right in uh in hollywood or you you, you know it's like you, you can't like Paul Thomas Anderson and then there's Paul Anderson. It's like you can't w there can't be two people that have like the same Right. Like, yeah. It's some you know. weird Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know how that works because you would think that like, well uh That's it's, you know, it's still the same name or whatever, yeah. But I mean I think it's both of their names too. So maybe there's some like it's like, okay, you can still have your name. You just have to like you can, go with you, some you get Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um but yeah, he's he said he picked that one cuz that was like that was like his childhood movie that he's watched like a million times. Nice. Um and I think I mean kind of same. I um I've I've watched this movie a bunch. I'm I'm excited to revisit that. it. It's been a while. I think it'll Never be the game either. Oh really? Yeah, I I was super into the game series when I was younger. <laughs> too. Have you seen the 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 new the new movie? one? It was all right. I mean, I understand that a big reason that I like this one is because of nostalgia, because of like that yeah. '90s silliness. Um, yeah. I thought the new one was fine. It was like it was okay. Um, Do you need to be familiar with the video game to understand the movie? I don't really think so. I mean, there's like there is like a plot to the games mostly, but it's pretty simple. Like you you get it from the movie, I think. It's just the 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 only thing you just like roll as long as you can roll with all of the characters that it throws at you cuz there's a lot of characters who just show up and like, you know, they have their random abilities or whatever. And it's just like, why? And it doesn't explain it, but it's just like the reason is because those are characters in the video game that you uh, can okay. play as. <laughs> um, so as long as you can roll with that, I think I you're, can I roll. Think be okay. Yeah, I can rock and roll. I can stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've already we've done our outros. Yeah. Hi. What, do we, what do we do now? I think we just clap again, so that um, way, or like we just stop the recording, I guess. 
I we guess can, so. I'm trying to make a reference to like you can catch the oh here catch that outro shoot it back at them if you're not already follow us on twitch at twitch.tv slash there will be duds we are broadcasting air quotes now on wednesday nights at 7 p.m uh it will not be live but hopefully one of us will be in the chat to respond i'll be there chatters yeah tj will be broadcasting it uh we are on youtube at there will be duds facebook twitter instagram We've got our brand pretty synergized at this point in yeah. time, so you can find us on all the socials, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You know, it's hard. You, it, you'd be hard pressed to not find us somewhere. <laughs> so as long as you search the right words, <laughs> we'll be there. Um, yeah, will, there will be to uh, see what happens. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they 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 shut off after I said that I was a red elk. They're like, that's all we care about is what, who are they in the movie? <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to stop the okay. stream then. Stop Why? The stream. Bye. <laughs> See you.